Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with what I'm going to call the sixth video um, of the series. Uh, you may feel differently because the Steam stream... I don't know. The, okay, I don't want to spend too much time on um, non-game things, but I am always fascinated about the fact that the really long videos, which are obviously VODs and don't have the kind of interaction and the lifetime, uh, seem to have a more persistent audience. <laughs> um, and I realize, and I, I get it, right? Because people who look for more traditional videos are maybe not necessarily going to like my style and want to want to go off on the other ones. But for those of you who, who watch that stuff, uh, I salute you because it's definitely not my thing, but I'm very happy it's your thing. Um, so with that in mind, it's a little tough, right? Because it's actually the first time that I've had a big, long video that extends, or that, that's over the... Um, the YouTube limit. Uh, so that unintentional two-parter, uh, I guess, would count as parts one and two. But my hope is that we've picked up to a point here at the end of this week where it's it's sort of clear enough what's going on that all that you really would have um, would have missed out on here is sort of the opening tutorial and then a bit of the um, sort of a bit of the opening of the the opening rooms and. There are a couple of things that we talked about uh, in the in the opening episodes uh, where, you know, talking a little bit about the Lighthouse Institute, that's kind of the big headline feature. But the thing is, that's going to be an end game thing that we do anyway. We we're going to have uh, a whole bunch of other roles to fill in. And so, uh, oh, that's interesting. Uh huh. I have a feeling um, my Twitch stream is going to be messed up. Anyways, I won't go, I, I don't want to completely relitigate re re all of that just because um, there's actually going to be some more, uh, there's going to be some more that I do before we follow through on it. So um, the real focus here is going to be getting into the the sort of meat and potatoes, if you will of um, House of Light, and that means cooking. Um, and uh, the I, whether or not we get to cooking today is another is kind of an open question because it depends on what guests arrive and, and what we try to do. But um, I am interested in um, basically seeing how far we can take the few languages we have. The more I was thinking about it, so um, we're going to be getting Rams and which I think I put in Birdsong. I need to remember. Uh, and then Sabazine, which I seem to recall. Um, or hang on, was it Sabazine and Birdsong? That's Arthur Moore. And then Ramsund, I think I actually put in Preservation. It's because they're beside each other. I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll know it when I look at the, look at the labels. Um, but the funny thing is, when I take a look at what that opens, um, it would be better for me to have something in Preservation because that allows me to start unlocking Bosk, even though we don't have um, we don't have a language in it yet. Whereas if I put it in Birdsong, it's a little bit like hushery. It just kind of sits there. Um, well, sorry, I should be a little little more clear on that. The reason why this isn't helpful for hushery is just the simple fact that hushery is going to be starting at five. Uh, under other circumstances, that would be useful. Um, I guess the other one that would be helpful is I think I put. I think Hyksos is one that goes in Scholacosophy. I can't remember the other one offhand, but um, that would be a useful one. And then I seem to recall Deep Men Diet goes in Horomachistry, and Horomachistry is gonna, definitely going to be one that goes all the way to nine. So it's a little funny how this is going to work out, but I think if I can get something in Bosk, uh, if I can get... There isn't really a way to get to preservation. So I think... I. Actually, yeah, the more I think of it, if I can get something in preservation, that really unlocks two paths for me, both Bosque and preservation itself. Um, illumination doesn't really, although I think I'm going to put both Erica Payne and Crack Track in that one, because I'm trying to think. I don't know if I have a lot of ways of getting Faust if we're going to be starting off at the top here and then going Ithistry to 9. Um... The Fusine didn't really unlock a whole lot, and I think it would be the same story with Nyctodromi, right? You put a you put a language in here, but given that Nyctodromi is going to be starting at 7 and moving down, that doesn't really give us a whole lot. So 
Um, I'd say a Bosque language, Scolacosophy, particularly Scolacosophy, actually. So either Bosque or Scolacosophy for the same reason that um, preservation is useful. Uh, something for Horomachistry and that might be it. I'll need to think about it a little bit, but yeah, those are those are the ones that I'm sort of keeping an eye on. In any case, all of those are to enable the salons, and of course, that's why I uh, I'm trying to commit lessons a little bit earlier than I normally would, and it's just simply because um, there are good reasons for wanting to uh, wanting to have some elements of the soul to be able to interact with people. Okay, so. I thought I had hired... Oh, I did hire a barber. Okay. Um, we will keep a Trist aside to talk to them. Again, we want to get them up to the Motley Tower. We'll use the Occult Scrap as well. Although maybe we'll see what visitor we get. Um, I don't think it would hurt to go to Crowcross Sands at this point. Hmm... Maybe Inks of Containment's the better option there. Better still, Sickle and Eclipse. Uh, okay. Um, now I did also say, well, I guess going to Crowcross Sands sort of eliminated the possibility of reading to a Pale Lady or the Crossing to Noon. Um, I suppose I could restore one of those if the time, if it came down to it. Um, which leads me back to that rather awkward position of having some options. Ugh. Yeah, so I guess the real challenge here is that I could do something like use my health. I mean, for instance, we could do some more gardening. Now that we're in summer, we should have some more vegetable options. Um, but specifically, my shaft and my metal don't actually do that much for me until I'm either reading a book or trying to do some kind of special uh, recipe. So I think the prudent option now, we have had a couple of... Uh, the last week or so we've had the... I, I'm talking about real time. Uh, we've had these situations where... Um, we're kind of sitting sitting around at the end of the day just because there hasn't like we've kind of already used all of our our options the more i think of it the more i kind of wish i kept that tryst available um i don't know as long as we get the motley tower open fast enough i don't think it'll it'll hurt too much um But I do think it would be a good idea for me to maybe make something of the sunny day. So let's see. This is my best sky. Well, hang on. Why do I think that's going to do anything? I need to make sure that it's the inks of containment. All right. Um... Right. Sorry. Now I remember. Okay. So we can still add a shaft. We can still add the sunny day. However, I need to find... Am I really losing it? Something led me to believe that I could get Stargall. And when I'm looking at it like this, it really feels like I'm pushing something, so... So clearly I thought there was some kind of material that I was going to be able to use. It wasn't an Awakened Feather, was it? I don't think... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, right. Now I remember. Uh, am I willing to give up the blue crown in order to... I think I am, actually. 
I'm at a point here where inviting people and getting uh, getting the results of that is is the most useful thing I can do. Okay, sorry, took me a minute to to figure out where I was where I was going with this. Um, it is very tempting to go for a walk on the moor, but I think probably a trip to the garden is the the right call here. So for that, we'll use spices and savers, carrots, tomatoes, marrows, and blessed onions, all the unsung heroes of the stew pot. I've learnt enough to puzzle out books in this language, though it might be slow going. Ramson, this language has been called uh, Mantique Altair and Lenga Alkel and the speech of birds and Ramson and the hazelnut tongue. But it's the language of secrets and its true name may never be used. The Aviform Hours use it at their roost or so the story goes. Um, okay. It is a tough call here. <laughs> so we've got Birdsong, The Falconer's Tale. There's a very old story told by falconers about the Aviform Hours, the secret gods who take the shape of birds. Once they were only five, the dove, the crow, the laughing thrush, the twin kites. The sixth had fallen into the talons of an owl, and they sought another to join their company. But the crow rejected half of those they found for the dowdiness of their plumage, and the dove rejected the others for being too gaudy. At last they found a nightbird, whose feathers were both perfect white and perfect bla black of the crow and of the dove. But once they had accepted him, they learnt he was no bird at all, only a night-flitting moth. Fortunately for the moth, their pride kept them from admitting their mistake. But since that day, the Aviform Hours will only meet at night, when the sixth of their kind won't be unmasked. So, I've read that a couple of times, but it actually just occurred to me, um, there's a couple of other um, connections to Hush House that I wanted to follow up on that. They're obvious ones, but like it's it's one to, to think about. I'm going to follow through on that when I have a couple more books that might be relevant to it. But there's also The Thief's Tale, and there's a few reasons to think that I'm going to want to commit it to uh, preservation in this case. So there's a very old story told by thieves about a competition among the Aviform Hours, the secret gods who take the shape of birds. The dove boasted of the bones he'd stolen from flesh, the crow of the flesh he'd picked from bones. One of the kite twins bragged that she'd stolen the borders from kingdoms, and the other that she'd taken the roads from crossroads. The magpie told all the colors he'd taken that are no longer found in the world, and the laughing thrush topped that with tales of the sights she'd stolen. But when the glitter-winged seventh of their number told them what he'd stolen, they were all shocked into silence. They fell upon him and stripped him of his wings and drove him from the sky. So he and what he stole are gone from the world. And now we cannot even name them, but we still feel their lack. Okay. So I think I'm going to commit this one. So this is good because we have a core, which means we can now also invite Mrs. Kill. It, it, it'll still be a little tricky just because um, Mrs. Kill does... Usually what I would be using Mrs. Kill for would be something that I can... Um, you know, I could level her up with core. But... You know, between the sweet bones and a few other things that we can do, um, I can uh, I can restore the core and and get things leveled up. Right now, we're still just trying to build up our um, we're just trying to build up our our capabilities. Now, um, I did make I kind of have like a a small list of um, kind of skills that I would be willing to put in. The best way to put it would be, I, they're kind of like a, a, a slush pile of skills. So, Edicts Inviolable, Quenchings and Quellings, Magafine Mystery, actually Magafine Mysteries in particular. Uh, weaving and Not Working, Resurgences and Emergences, Stitching and Binding, um, Furs and Feathers, Spices and Savers, actually Spices and Savers uh, is already leveled up a little bit, so I should be considering putting that in somewhere. Uh, desires and Dissolutions, Herbs and Infusions, Rites of the Roots, Orchids and Narcotics. Um, I think those would be 
I'm trying to remember the ones... I have like a few little uh, markers of the... Um, the branches in the Tree of Wisdoms that they go on, but I don't... Um, I obviously got bored doing that part way through, so I think that's what I've got so far. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, that's a fairly decent little pile. Like, I wasn't paying too close attention, but, you know, we can level up Furs and Feathers. Theoretically, we can level that up to two, and that's an option that I have to put in... Um, I don't think I'd put it in Nyctodromi, because we can't do the two, but at the very least, that gives us something to get going with Bosk. Um, if I wanted to keep going down the Bosk route, what are some of the other possibilities? Well, really just Insects and Nectars. And Insects and Nectars, I actually kind of want to hold back for something more specific. So, I don't know. We'll see. Obviously, we're going to need a Sky or a Scale to level that up. And those are fairly precious. So maybe I'll hold off on that one. But what about Preservation? Surely we've got one of those other ones that I was talking about, like Quenchings and Quellings. Um... Surgeries and Exsanguinations, I think, was one I was going to hold back because that one, there's a reference to the three three leaves of the Watchman's Tree. White is what remains. I seem to recall. Well, if nothing else, because it's good against Theoplasmic Contamination, that one I'll probably want to hold back on. And Menescate Reflections, I think, might be slight. I think I want to hold back on that one just because... That might be good for um, illumination uh, because I seem to recall my path through the through Tree of Wisdoms either has too much Faust or too little. So Quenchings and Quellings may be on the preservation path and um, Furs and Feathers may be on the Bosk path. If I did that, I'd get an extra health. So that would be helpful for making recipes but again a lot of this stuff is still pretty early i don't need to i don't need to fully commit to putting these things into the tree of wisdoms quite yet okay we don't know who is arriving on the event yet but i think now would be a good time for me to talk to this barber about trist because that gives me the option of renewing it at the sweet bone so secret sorrows may uh, join our strengths and i think I'm trying to think if there is something that I can do with my shaft that's important right now. And I'm drawing a blank. So I'm going to do a fixing and mending. I know that'll mean that my tryst is available later than I wanted. Um, but I'm willing to spend the 30 seconds just because it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a stretch to think that I'm going to be able to... Um, to read... Um, cry. Actually, maybe one of the decisions I can make, so... Pearl and Tide and Sea Stories. Uh, maybe. All right, Madame Limpy Bichet. Now, she knows Ramsund. She prefers forge, food, and drink. I'm trying to decide if it would be better to bring her in rather than Douglas Moore. I'm thinking probably it is. So we'll, or sorry, I say madam, it's mademoiselle. Um, okay, I am definitely going to follow up with her, but let's get the barber taken care of first. So I can discuss a memory with my assistants. We'll use up the memory, but boost the assistants' abilities for the rest of the day. Don't spill it. Stargall ink, an ink traditionally, but only rarely made with meteoric iron, a minor ink of power. All right, so that's not a bad start to the day. Um, I'm debating as to whether or not I want to... You know, I've actually got a nice little system now for being able to... draw things out of the well. So we'll do that one more time. Lower the bucket creaking into the dark. But I have, I have a plan in terms of how I'm going to make this work. I 
And in fact, based on what I know now, hmm, I was actually thinking, well, okay, so I can catalog a book with the metal when the time comes. I think probably it's better for me to actually try and read one of these books instead. So I really don't know if The Crossing to Noon or To a Pale Lady makes more sense to read, but but we are going to go for a confounding parable just on the chance that um, the barber winds up giving us something a little more helpful. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. So let's... One thing I've kind of wanted to do as part of this series is when I have an opportunity, it would be nice to try and talk a little bit about some of the figures that are coming up in the book. So for instance, if we're reading To a Pale Lady, it might be nice to just do a quick reminder in terms of who Ava DeWolf is. Um, all right, I'm sorry, Christopher, your nook is just too useful to hold, hold things in. I have a feeling this is gonna be turned into some um, bugle before too long. So you say, my youth, the day is done, and so am I, but I've earned my pay, so we will restore the tryst. Memories don't last long outside books, but it's made a difference for the day. So we still have time before we need to follow up with um, Mademoiselle Bichet. We have six uh, moth. We've got six with the barber's assistant, so now's not a bad time for us to just have a chat, so... I could encourage my assistant, work with them for a little while, exalt them. Or I could just listen to what uh, whatever they might have to say. As far as Ava de Wolf is concerned, we've got the Watchman's Tower, the first floor. The notorious Ava de Wolf, first and last Baroness Brankrug, liked this room because the side of the house carried the fewest memories of her poor father, Valentine. So she could eavesdrop on the conversations of visitors waiting below, or just because of how the pale light slanted through the windows in the last days of winter. I'm trying to remember, uh, we have Ava here, so the description, uh, this is the crystal, uh, sorry, this is the crystal called Scolocyte, the Wormstone, polished to chill smoothness. There is a serpent around her neck, and Seventh Baroness Brankrug, a niche with a plaque, not to be crossed, not to be found. Crossed, obviously, is doing quite a bit of work there, I feel. Uh, reading room visitors were usually permitted this far into the house and no further. In the days when librarians commanded the services of the fine takers, visitors were sometimes left unsupervised, but I believe the desk, the book wheel, is a DeWolf heirloom, uh, heirloom, a gift to Ava DeWolf from her admirer, the adept Franklin Bancroft. The desk and lectern are much more recent. Steel plaques to both, uh, sorry, on both read, to Gervinus Van Loren in gratitude for his assistance in the closing of the winding stair. Yabney Hastings, Nocturnal Sec Secretary, 1928. All right, carrots, tomatoes, marrows, and blessed onions, all the unsung heroes of the stew pot. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to start off with. Now, marrows are rather helpful in terms of preparing salon. So I think in this case, I'm just going to open up the sack of vegetables for some, uh, for some marrows. But eventually we're going to uh, try and get some diversity in there um, just to see if we can get a few other uh, a few other dishes and ingredients. I'm actually trying to recall if any of the marrows do help me with the um, with the guests, uh, particularly because I'm going to be focusing on people who want forge. In fact, let me just put that down on. So if I can, I'd like to invite her back. I've learned something or perhaps just remembered it. I'm trying to remember exactly what I want in terms of these memories, but in this case, it's just a chance. I mean, one, two. We should probably talk with um, Olympia Bichet next. I don't recall if it takes, I think it's actually less than three minutes, but It'd be nice to verify that. The Locksmith's Dream, Portions and Proportions, the second volume of Teresa Galmier's examination and the parallels of the mystic dreams of artisans. The frontispiece has been slashed with a razor. 
Uh, also, I blew it in terms of the timing. So I was going to try and restore the health in bed, but if it's going to take 90 seconds, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that. So fair enough. We'll just have spare, spare water. So anyways, uh, in this volume, Galmier records fewer dreams and explicates more of her own elaborate theories. We see this again and again. What is below can't escape what is above. The finest artisans all dream of the white door in the end. I'm no artisan, only a scholar. I think there's a secret that all these artisans know, but I think that secret is only half the story. I don't think there's any re well, well, <laughs> the reason we haven't, aren't doing anything yet is because we don't have uh, the element of the soul. All right. Better now. So I don't have much hope that we're going to be able to hang on to the memory at the end. Okay, we've got an intuition. Um, I've learned something or perhaps just remembered it. So I think here, probably best to just get the um, affair of the royal endeavor. And I suppose, I mean, if I'm willing to wait overnight, we can invite Arthur Moore right away. I probably messed that up a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do... We'll keep the invitation to Arthur Moore in our back pocket. We'll wait till tomorrow when I'm likely going to be cataloging some books anyway. And then we can use the chat with him to uh, to get the language. So, uh, Madam, uh, Mademoiselle Olympie Bichet, essayist, illustrator, critic, editor of the Karisham Review. Uh, this royal endeavor, I wonder what you think. No, don't tell me. Don't want to get us in trouble, either of us. Try a book with as much forge mystery as their forge interest. I feel we can do better than glimmerings. Yeah, Vincent's minglings. Uh, I also should probably explain uh, the affair of the royal endeavor. The new king has sanctioned the use of the crown's wealth to fund a visionary new industrial project, one that will transform our economy and furnish the kingdom with a sense of patriotic mission. Parliament, dazzled, has already passed the Royal Endeavour Act, mandating the construction of the necessary facilities, although the details remain in some respects vague. I always thought this was definitely one of the more interesting ones. I, I think probably just because all of the details of the new king and, you know, kind of the intrigues, I definitely have my, my sort of political interests, so I... Um, I definitely... I'm a bit of a sucker when it comes to those... Uh, those details, and particularly as they play out in um, in the secret history setting. Okay, so we're going to combine our Edict Marshal here. We need one more, which comes from the Lunar Globe. It's the Earth, but silvered like the Moon, unlabeled and pocked with craters. I can master this mystery, enough Moon to match Mystery Moon. Now, at some point, I can also create the Old Wound. That is a persistent memory, which will give me two moons. So it's not a bad one for me to hang on to, but perhaps it's one that I will want to use when I don't have anything else to do with my elements of the soul. At this point, let's bring back the shaft. I may just be doing this to make some money. No, I'm no believer, but my mother, she believed, and she used to talk of the second dawn. Of course, I did not take it seriously, but now the king's project, so strange. I'd like to see what I can find in your collection. Truly, it might mean a second dawn, or a war. I prefer the dawn, but then it might be both. Thank you, librarian. Keep my visit between us two only, for now, if you don't mind. So, of course, this is also an interesting implication. This is the same reaction from the base game. But given the context of House of Light, it does sort of advance the period a little bit more. And it does talk about sort of this anticipation for war. And really, this is something that I think since at the very least Exile and probably a little bit before. But I first really became aware of this stuff in terms of Exile. This does seem to be a way that the um, sort of the setting has been slowly moving towards um, I don't know actually how far. So this is the thing is that my time in um, House of Light during the beta was somewhat limited. Again, I just play the game quite slowly. Um, so I don't know how far they go into sort of uh, anticipating the war that sort of has been um, 
been suggested for a while, but it'd be I'm definitely interested to see where where it all winds up. Um, for now, though, I'm going to settle with informing the various players of their possibilities. Okay, so I have a shop to work with. Um, Anything I bring back has to... Well, actually, I guess I have slightly more than a minute. So if I feel like I can sneak in some kind of a... Um, okay, let me just take a minute to think this through. So I've got another minute before... Um, to a pale lady. Because it's level 8, I think I may get two memories out of that. Which suggests to me, well, then we already have the intuition, though. So it's sensible for me to bring back a tryst. Tuppence will buy me a hearty meal in a quiet place where I can rest and gather my thoughts. This summer, I am sitting on the bench outside the Sweet Bones, eating crumbly cheese and nettle wrappings and good black rye bread, soaking up the sun. Okay. So we will add the card right away with apologies to Douglas Moore for what you might call an occult correspondence so the hope here is I'm going to have enough time to be able to use the shop to earn some money um, but will they come when you do call for them Olympia's address, Karisham Review, Plover Street, Karisham. And she will need Moth for the invitation, so that's probably not too hard for me, but not it's not straightforward. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick with saying... Okay, so we have about 15 seconds to spare with earning money with the shop. I'm kind of wasting the day, though. And yeah, we'll wait till we'll wait till the next day for Arthur Moore. Um, if I get something really wonderful uh, in this conversation with the barber, I might change up those plans, but I doubt it. Um, we can make all the Stargall in the world. Motley Tower, second floor. Nasty theoplasmic miasma hangs around the room above. It's no longer strong, but it'll take years to dissipate to the point of safety. With the right help, I can raise counter-influences. Um, now I suppose one option I have is to get the egg back. Uh, or I could investigate for a marrow. I think I'm going to get the egg. Offer this beast my company? Who knows? Perhaps it will offer something in return. To a pale lady, a collection of Franklin Bancroft's letters to Ava DeWolf. There's a substantial body of erotic pleading and half-finished poetry, but also learned discur uh, discursions on matters mythical and marine, as well as notes towards a comic opera on which Franklin and Ava were apparently collaborating. Do not return, O oh my light, to the sea. None of us can be what we were. That is history's curse. None of us can know what we may be. That is history's gift. Your mothers and the mothers of your mothers are caught in eternity, jaws like a robe ham in a trap. It is the pearl that shines, but the tide that returns. So salt, pearl and tide. As expected, this was a, um, this was two memories. I don't think we have a salt shelf yet. Um, so we've got advice on containment, traveling at night, regrets, storms, contradictions. I'm slightly inclined to make Ava's shelf the... one of Ava's shelves the salt.
Okay, so first thing we'll do is acquire Pearl and Tide. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. Better now. And yeah, originally the plan was to make some money at the Sweet Bones, but again, money money is helpful, um, but it's not the only it's not the only consideration. It might be nice now that it's summer. So we've got moth, orchids, fragrant chal. Ooh, yeah, there's actually a few. You know, the cat's claw would have been good in spring too because of the, um, the cat wink ink. Anyway, um, best to look forward on this stuff. But I think it's fair to say even, I think just with the commitment of Ramsland alone, uh, we've opened up quite a few possibilities. I should also take a minute here and just, so I believe these are Kilasimi, Deep Mandiac, Fusine, but tricky. Um, these I think were all languages I understood. And this was a Sabazine book. So we will actually be able to read Sabazine before too long. Um, I'm going to take a minute before I put something to bed just because I want to make a decision in terms of how I'm leveling up Pearl and Tide. Right, another leaf on the Tree of Wisdom. So this will be a level 2 skill when all is said and done. Nope. Actually, here's what we'll do. So I can't keep the intuition, so let's... Okay, does it make sense for me to keep the salt? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, Pearl and Tide. This is why we kept the Tryst. We'll add the Intuition. There's always more to learn. Improve the skill to level 2. This will increase its aspects, which will help with crafting and make it suitable for higher branches in the Tree of Wisdoms if you haven't already committed it. I know this is going to be a longer episode. We'll just wrap up the details here. And we can get a fresh start in the morning. And now it suggests a meal would be welcome. Hand's egg, delicious when cooked, alarming when dropped. Finally, Pearl and Tide, the depths of the sea, the waves upon the shore, and the memories of their withdrawal. So, uh, again, I'm feeling pretty good in terms of where the playthrough is. I realize we haven't done any of the cooking yet, but we're, um, we're actually in a better place for that, having done a small digression on languages. So, if I want, actually, I can send off... It's definitely going to be more than a minute to bring him in. So let's send the invitation to the visitor now. Um, so he's going to arrive. He'll teach us uh, Sabazine in three minutes. Um, now we may, again, depending on how the day goes, maybe we want to take some time with the chickens before we um, before we take up the, the talk verb. There's a few different ways of, uh, of handling that. Um, I would also like to rummage through the vegetable sacks. Um, but overall, we've got a few different tasks in front of us. So number one, uh, we've got six new books. So uh, two Curia, three Nocturnal, and one Baronial. 
Uh, we've actually got a full room of, of different toys to play with here, but I think I'm going to save the explanation for Monday's episode. We have the third floor of the Motley Tower. So this is a six heart or six sky. The most likely way for me to get there would be Mrs. Kill, because if we bring in Mrs. Kill, she starts with one heart. Uh, we can add two more with the core, keeping in mind we need to restore that at the Sweet Bones. So that brings her up to three. We can bring her up to four with the Kitchen Bowls. And then that's a question of a memory. And we know that we can get two heart from a memory. So that would be just a simple solace or something like that. So again, not easy, but definitely within my, uh, within my capabilities. And that actually gets us a moth desk. So that is a reasonably high priority um, unlocking. As far as the other hearts are concerned, I think they are a bit sterner. Yeah, so there's the wrecked pantry. We'd need seven. I mean, really, that's just a question of a drink, so that's not the hardest problem. Although it sure would be nice if we had something like an Arab to be able to talk with Mrs. Kill. Um, yeah, so I think probably at least a couple more rooms just because they give me useful things. Certainly doesn't hurt to catalog the books just to see what my options are. We still have two more that I can read, The Crossing to Noon, Ettery After, and then hopefully The Rose of Hypatia because uh, weaving and not working would be rather helpful for getting certain inks. Um, but again, the reason why I wanted to take the time talking about these plans is that because we've got enough people in the book, so we can bring Serena Blackwood and Olympia Bichet, who both would want... Oh, so actually, in terms of all of my guests, so um, Serena and Madame Bichet would, would both want uh, forge food. I actually don't know what Arthur Moore would want. So that's maybe a, an open question. And then scale with Fraser Strathcoin. But in any case, we have four people that we can invite. So now that we have four people that we can invite, um, we bring along Denzel, we can have our uh, salon in the Physic Garden. And of course, the sooner we get that done, the better, um, because I'll generate some lessons out of that and I'll want to, I'll basically just want to do all of the, the follow-up. Um, so what that means is, number one, I want to experiment with the kitchen a little bit, just to see what's available to me in terms of, um, in terms of, like, dishes to serve it's it's all well and good for me to say i want to host the salon but i actually need to do the work um and then on top of that uh i want to make sure that i have all the inks to be able to invite people because right now unless i want to use the perinculate i can't actually invite fraser strathcoin and i'm going to assume that he might be annoyed with me if i give him the deadly if i uh, invite him with using the deadly ink so uh next week i think the it's more likely than not that we'll see a salon. At the very least, we'll experiment with some cooking. Um, and then we will see how far we can get with our existing lessons. But I'm definitely taking my time to say goodnight. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, this should be the Friday episode. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And we'll be back on Monday for another episode. Until then, take care.